Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run Your presence towards heaven Father we thank you for your presence in this house we thank you Father filling our hearts with your holy presence we thank you Lord filling our minds our temple with your holy presence every organ in this body belongs to you every work in this body belongs to you you call us to be a living sacrifice, giving our bodies a living sacrifice. We submit to you, King. We surrender to you, King. Forgive us, Lord, from every pollution, every uncleanness, every wickedness, every rebellion, every sin. Forgive us, God. We invite you into our lives. We invite you into our marriages, in our children, in our schools, in our jobs, in our business, in our ministry, everything we do, we invite you, my King. We know without you, we are absolutely nothing. But with you, we are 
more than a conquerors. We thank you for your holy presence. Thank you, God, for humbling our hearts to seek you as a high priority of this month. Help us not to be distracted. Help us, God, not to be polluted. Help us, God, not to be deviated. Keep our eyes on you, Holy Spirit. Because you said through your prophet, you'll keep him in a perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Help us to stay on you. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Can somebody give the Lord a hand clap? Come on, bless his name. Bless his name. If you can just turn your neighbor and say, good to see you today. You may be seated for a few minutes. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give our online folks a big hand clap. Come on, bless them. Thank you for joining uh, with us today. And we pray that the blessings will go to you as well from here to wherever you're watching. If you're, wa if you're heading to work or you may be laying on bed or you may be, you know, sitting at home and drinking a cup of coffee. We want to thank you for tuning in, however you feel like it. Um, you know, I, I, the Lord spoke to my heart again. Another thing that I just want this Saturday... I'm going to anoint uh, with the oil. So I want you to prepare. We have two few more days to kind of, you know, if you have an oil, you can bring that out on Saturday. We're going to have a Saturday just to anointing service. Um, we might have a prayer worship, but I'm really leading me to lay hands on some key people um, for something the Lord is going to unlock this year. So I'm only do what the Spirit of the Lord leads me. So just let you know the Lord laid on my heart. We're going to be doing on Saturday. Just prepare your hearts. You know, whatever you're praying, just, you know, come on Saturday, prepare. We're going to have a service of anointing service. And you that are watching, you know, we, we, we would love for you to be here. If you cannot, we're going to pray blessings on Saturday over you guys as well. If you're in Florida, wherever you're watching, uh, we pray that the same thing that what God is doing, God is will do, will come in your household as well. As we're learning this tabernacle prayers, I want to um, kind of re- Iterate um, those elements that we talked about um, in the tabernacle that, you know, God instituted tabernacle as the idea that he wanted to enter into a place where he did not have access from the beginning when Adam fell. God is omnipotent. Like I was saying, God has a potential to do anything, anywhere except a human body because of the sin. When Adam fell, we cut off access to God to come in. And the Lord said, you know, I'm going to have an avenue to create that I can come in their bodies as well because I'm God, I'm going to be able to do it. So the way he started was he started through the tabernacle. He gave Moses the idea of tabernacle, which is inner being of who we are. The tabernacle has a three sections. We learned that outer court and inner court. In the inner court, you have two sections which are holy place and holiest holy. The outer courts represents our body. Everybody knows your body. But the inner course is only you. And the holiest holy is only God. In other words, that we are, you know, having three natures in us. That we are spirit being, which is what the holiest holy. And we live and we function in this soul. We have a soul. And that is called the holy place. And we model our life or we move in our life in this shell called the body, which is the outer curve. So God was helping Moses to see that he's trying to get into this temple, not only the tabernacle, but the tabernacle gives us the two identifications. One is Christ, another one is our temple. At the end, you know, after tabernacle, the Lord instituted temple. When Jesus came, he said, Destroy this temple, I will build, build it in three days. They thought he was talking about um, Roman temple. But Jesus was talking about his temple. He said, destroy me, I will build it in three days. So if you look at here, these are some of the sim symbolic language to connect it to us. 
and connected to Christ. And we talked about brazen altar. We talked about labor. And yesterday we talked about candlestick. There are seven lamps. Represent seven spirits. Represent seven churches in the book of Revelations. Represent seven angels the Lord assigned on the planet earth. Every church can function these seven angels. The spirit of the Lord, spirit of fear of the Lord. Spirit of knowledge, spirit of understanding, spirit of might, spirit of counsel. I don't know, you notice sometimes when I lay hands on people, I do use those, those prayers that I pray that the spirit of wisdom will come upon you. What that means is the angel has been assigned to you. The spirit of angel will lead you into directions that you need. There's sometimes, this is what I pray and I help you, that when I need a wisdom, I only look in that menorah, I say, Lord, you have an angel assigned just for the wisdom. I need an angel to give me direction today. And that's what the Lord said. If you ask the Lord for wisdom, he'll give you wisdom. What he gives is he gives an angel to go with you, to lead you, guide you, direct you. There are so many areas that I find myself that without that menorah, I would not be here. You know, I would have been a long time of stupid and dumb. But the wisdom is key for all of us that, that we can grow. And another thing is understanding. You know, we are struggling constantly to understand the marriage, understand the church, understand people, understand the world system, understand why terrorism exists, understand all these things are. But the Bible says, he gives us a peace that gives all understanding. There's an angel that's been assigned for us to walk into that kind of understanding. God will lead us. And the, the, my favorite one among all of them, all of them are great. But I really love this too, that knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because when we walk in knowledge, there's a peace and grace is multiplied. Because when those two are multiplied, your life on this earth gets so exciting. You know, peace and grace, if they have a hand in hand, you're, you're, you're good. You don't need money, you don't need all, they come if you have a peace and grace are multiplying. And that happens only through knowledge. And the last one, but not the least one, my favorite one is the fear of the Lord. Because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We need to have that fear. And Bible says the fear of the Lord does not come because we ask God. Fear of the Lord needs to be taught. That's what the Bible says. So we need to put our focus on the word of God to be learned. You know, there, when, once that fear comes on us from the word of God, you orchestrate your life according to the word of God. You purposefully lead your life according to the word of God. Yes, you want to go this way, but your mind says, no, uh -uh, I'm going to go this way because I fear God. I obey God. I honor God. Yeah, that's why you, you go in. And otherwise, the rebellion comes in our hearts. We rebel all constantly. Our nature is rebellious nature. We rebel from the childhood. But the fear of the Lord will keep us in a perfect path that we should be going to. So today, we're going to go into the holiest, holy, like before going into the holiest, holy, we're going to go in the holy place. There's a two more elements in that holy place. You have a showbread and the altar of incense. The three of them in the holy place, which is, you know, a candlestick, showbread, and the altar of incense. So I'm going to talk about that. You know, God put that in our soul. In our soul, we need three areas of journey. Number one, we need illumination, revelation, understanding, knowledge. Number two, we do need a fresh bread from heaven for our soul to be satisfied. And number three, our soul is the one worshiping God. When we worship, we, we're willing to come before the Lord. Then we can walk in spirit. So if you look at here in number one, uh, table of showbread, the word, it is the number one, fresh revelation of the word. It says fresh revelation of the Lord, from the Lord. Number two, altar of incense is worship. And that element is worship, worshiping the names of God. I'm just going to go over a few scriptures to kind of meditate on it. At the end, we're going to focus on one point so we can pray that in us, for us. In the beginning was the word. That word is logos. If you look at it, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and word was God. It's important to notice the point here is the logos. Logos is the one that is, you know, kind of like written word or, or, or a word that is we're extracting from the Bible. The word that we speak are logos. 
but book of Acts 12 24 says but the word of God grew and multiplied and Logos has the potential to grow and multiply if we have a Logos in your heart in your mind that means speaking word you're speaking constantly it actually has a potential to grow and it multiplies and Acts 19 20 I love this one it says it grew so mightily it prevailed if you if you're facing a challenge if you're facing a situation if you're facing a people all we gotta do is get the logos in our consciousness and speak that he says mightily grew I love that word mightily that means beyond you can imagine beyond we can imagine beyond we all can see it it grew watch the word prevailed it will prevail God's word will prevail not the culture not the economy not no God's word will prevail you know in 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 the worst government season they proved this word when Rome was leading Rome was one of the brutal you know <laughs> governments that ever mankind faced even at that time the word of God prevailed they overcame persecution they overcame pain they overcame it's important for us to strengthen our hearts the word that you hear constantly the word that you read constant the word that you think constantly has the ability to prevail anything I mean like when I say by my stripes is you know I'm healed and when I declare that my body shall be healed that's the logos no 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 Rema. it's logos I'm speaking my body shall be healed I'm speaking that word because the word says that by his stripes we were healed and I'm saying my God shall supply all my needs I'm doing logos because the word of God says my God shall supply all you so I'm taking it I'm speaking it it's logos and Jesus comes and says something another word has been introduced in the Greek but English also it's used word but in Greek it says rhema and Jesus answered and said it is written that man shall not leave life does not happen by logos life he says man shall not live by the bread alone but he says every word that proceeded out of mouth of God or that every word that comes out of God so there is another word that comes from heaven freshly to us that means that you can read the word and there's another thing in the word will come alive to you only for you it's not for everybody you know this is what we make a mistake when rhema comes to me i take that rhema and give it to you you're making a mistake rhema does not belong to everybody logos belong to everybody rhema belongs to me so that's why when somebody receives the word from the lord you can't change them there's a power in it all through the scriptures you see the men of God if they wrote everything they heard from the Lord the books cannot contain in this world that's what the Bible writer says every word but the rhema comes to you as you listening the word of God when something you hear it it belongs to you don't try to give it to somebody it's like you're doing you taking the fresh bread and give it to somebody you can't do that you can give logos not rhema it says man he did not say men, man, individual, singular. Man shall not live by bread alone. If God speaks to you something, guard it, preserve it. Don't tell anybody until it manifests. This is where we make a mistake. We tell everybody. Don't tell anybody. Keep it in your heart. Guard it, preserve it until you see it. Before this God, the building, I didn't tell anybody before the Lord gave me a word. I kept it. I kept it so hard. It was exploring the command. No, I, I, I'm not saying no, but I'm going to wait. When that's manifested. And then I let people. It's important. You hear from the Lord. It's rhema. It's not just the hearing only. It's the protecting that word is important. Bible says God with all diligence all diligence when God says you know your body is gonna be healed you better guard that word don't tell nobody because people will tell you, child 
Sometimes you have to go through this and you begin to look. I thought the Lord told me. Yeah, the Lord told me because you spoke it. You got to keep it. Is this helping anybody? Right? Keep it. Preserve it. Keep it. So that's the rhema comes from the Lord, from the world. And watch the rhema will do to us. It's important to know what rhema do. Rhema does inside. Logos will, will affect everything. Ephesians 5.26 says, To make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with the water through the rhema. I'm going to be cleansed not by Logos. I can hear message after message. I can still be rebellious. I can go to church Sunday after church and I can still be watching stuff that I should not be watching it. I can go to church and pay my tithes. I can still be a lion. I go to church, I talk to people, I can still hate my wife, argue with her, fight with her because I have a logos knowledge, but I never had access to Rhema. Once I have access to Rhema, my character will be under attack. And that's when the real DNA of God's word manifests. A man who hears the rhema will produce the character. Man who hears the logos will have an effect for a while, but the inside is not a change. We will have a title called Christianity. And in other words, he says, this is even powerful. I love this. John 15, 7 says, if you remain in me, my logos, my rhema remains in you. In other words, that the locust that you hear will keep you in Christ. But the rhema will keep you in Christ. When you have a rhema, whatever you ask, you will have it. Watch this word. I didn't write the Bible. When I read scriptures like this, I take it very seriously and challenge myself. It says, ask whatever you wish. Is that what you see? I'm not saying something. Okay, let me say it again. Ask whatever you what? Wish. And it will be what? Done. It has to be done. It will be done. It must be done. Because the rhema is in me. Rhema is in me. I'm preparing my heart with the rhema. I'm molding my life with the rhema. I'm preparing my focus with the rhema. I'm guarding my heart with the rhema. I'm surrounding my consciousness with the rhema. And the rhema has so power as it is in heaven on earth. Rhema has so effectiveness. When you speak it under the consciousness of rhema, it has to happen. It will happen. That's what Jesus said. Ask what you wish. Because once the rhema is in it, you don't wish wrong things. You wish right things. When rhema is shaping your culture, you wish right things, not a wrong things. You're sitting there, well, maybe I can wish a car. No, you can't wish a car when rhema is in it. You wish like this. God use me until I close my eyes. That's rhema we're telling you to pray a prayer like that. God put me in a place where the enemy has no power over my life. That's Rhema speaking through your heart. Because Rhema does not ask things on the earth. Rhema asks things of the Father. And that's what he says. Whatever you wish, it will be done. It will be done. It will be done. I love those words. It just sh this scripture shaped me who I am. We wouldn't even have this kind of stuff. The bank says, forget about it. I said, Rhema is bigger than the banks. Rhema is stronger than people. <laughs> I only one thing I said, Lord, don't let me have a Rhema. I'm going to be a dangerous person. And you, know, you don't want to mess with that kind of people. For sure. Oh yeah. Okay, Romans 10, 11, 17 says it. Then the faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the rhema of God. Now you want a faith? Not in Logos. Logos will prepare you to receive a rhema. 
once you hear from God, faith will come alive in you. Faith will be regenerated in your brand new way. You know it by the power of God. And that's the real, 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 real faith. I'm not taking somebody else's faith. I'm not using somebody mortal and I'm going to follow. No, no. You heard from God. You follow it. It will happen because the faith coming by hearing. Hearing the word Rhema of God. I know we got to pray, but I'm getting excited. I feel like I'm having church right now. Just Proverbs, 30, <laughs> Proverbs 35. Look at this. Proverbs. Every rhema of God is what? Pure. This is how you know if God's speaking, enemy speaking, your own consciousness speaking. If the word is impure, it is not rhema. Some people come and tell, Chat, the Lord told me, yeah, you tell me what the Lord told you, then I'll tell you if the Lord or not. Because he can't go against the Bible. Every rhema of God is pure. I don't know if you ever tasted what purity really means. The closest thing Bible compares purity is when you touch a baby's skin. Close your eyes and put that finger on the baby's skin gently and measure your heart. That's the closest thing Bible compares to purity. When God speaks to you, there is no impurity. I'm here. <laughs> Nine out of ten don't hear from God when they say I heard from God. I said, I said, did you ever read the Bible really right? Because the enemy talking, and they, they think it's God saying. It's, it's just sad. I just said so sad. I just don't know. You know, I'm glad. I said, Lord, forgive us, all of us. You know, I heard that too sometimes ago, and I'm, I'm revisiting my heart. So every word of God is. When God gives you rhema, it's pure. And he says he is, that rhema is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. If you really hear from God, Satan could stand next to you, could not touch you. That's the rhema. Satan could look at you right in your face, could not touch you. Now people come and say, Satan attacked me, devil attacked me. What kind of doctrine are you listening? He said, God speaks to and the enemy has no power. And we're tired of listening to all this baloney junk. This word is pure, people. I have a passion. Don't look at me like I'm crazy. I just have a passion for this word. It just gets me like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> First Peter 1 Peter 1.23, I'm done. Being born again, not of corruptible seed. Look at the word. We're not born again by corruptible seed. But we are incorruptible seed by the rhema of God. <laughs> I'm not born again by the logo. Somebody preaching. No, I know DNA of God came in my being. And which liveth, abideth. Forever. That means if we're really born again by the Spirit of God, we shall be living, abiding forever. Okay. John 4 24. It says, God is spirit. Now I'm transitioning to the altar. They worship him in spirit and truth. And Psalm says 96 9. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. It says fear before him. It's important for us to have that reverence towards God. We can't ignore the reverence. And Psalms 99, 9 says, Exalt the Lord our God and worship him at his holy hill. For the Lord God is holy. He's holy people. That holy is not just kind of, I'm so silent because I'm holy. That word holy is, he separated himself from uncleanness, from darkness, from evil, from pollution, from noise, from sin, from rebellion, from wickedness. He separated himself. He said, I'm not that. I am this. He said, I am life. 
I am peace. I am joy. I am that living being. And we try to worship from here to here. He said, no, I want you to leave that. Come here and lift your hands as a holy. Then you become like a God. And it says Philippians 3, 3. For we are circumcision which worship God in spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus, have no confidence in flesh. We're not going to worship in our flesh. We worship really from our heart. We give the best worship to God. And, then, and this is the last scripture that I want you to remember. The, but the Lord who brought you up out of the land of Egypt with a great power and stretched arm, him shall you fear. Him shall you worship. Him shall you do sacrifice. Three things. As you begin this weaker year, make yourself clearly conclusion. I'm going to fear him. But this is what the fear means. When you fear him, you don't fear nothing on this earth. Let me say it again. When you fear him, you don't fear nothing on this earth. You fear him, you worship him, and I serve him. If we could do those three things, and I want you to pray for you. If there's any area in these three things that you're not doing, can I see your hand so I can pray for you right now? Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bow your heads. I'm going to pray. Thank you that are watching. I'm doing the same thing. We're all, we're all are going to be failing. But let's redo it again. Refocus. Father, I pray for your people. They that are watching. They that are here. They lift up their hands. That in past we did not fear you, Lord. We feared everything. We feared sickness. We feared lawyers. We feared doctors. We fear people. We fear our parents. We did not fear you. We're asking you to forgive us, God. Give us that idea again that we fear you. You brought us from darkness into marvelous light. And Father, we worship you. And then we live a living sacrifice for you. I pray that revelation will rest upon every soul in this room, every person that are watching, every person that's going to hear this message. Let the revelation rest on them that we fear you, God. We reverence you. Thank you so much for your valuable time. We hope you enjoyed this inspirational information and encourage you to join us in making a difference by visiting us at www.cjclife.com.